Thank you for joining us for the daily Bible study for the Silang Church of Christ. Uh, for those of you who are from the Philippines, we are located in Bayan, Silang, Cavite. If you're unfamiliar with the Philippines, then we are located, Silang, Cavite is approximately 50 kilometers or 31 miles south of Ninoy Aquino International Airport, located in Metro Manila. We are glad that you've taken the time out of your day to join us for our Bible study, and we hope that you benefit from this study. Um, you guys are going to need to help me because we have a bunch of prayers right now. Um, Samson, uh, Sam, who was baptized Sunday before last, he had a death in his family. Um, I don't know when it was. I think it was over the weekend. But uh, Rio was unable to attend our midweek Bible study this week because of uh, the obligations that go with that. Um, we also want to keep uh, Pedro and Glendy in our prayers. We hope that they get better. Uh, we're glad that Elaine... We're glad that Elaine is feeling better and she is with us today. Uh, Mary Faye's dad is not doing real well. If you notice, we haven't seen her for a couple of Sundays and she missed midweek this week because she's the only person who can take care of her father. And that's unfortunate, but it's, you know, it's a reality of life. Who else needs to be on this prayer list? Anybody? Robic's daughter. Rolick's daughter. Rolick, how's your daughter? My daughter is saying, okay, okay, sir. She's okay. That's praise, right? We'll give thanks to God. Thank you for answering our prayers. We are so happy to hear that his daughter got better. Uh, what else we got? That's it. Rolick, lead us in prayer, please. Okay, let us bow our heads. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for this time you're giving to each of us uh, to open your word and discover who you are. Thank you that you don't leave us in the dark about who you are and what you are doing in the world, but you reveal yourself in your will through Bible. Heavenly Father, we pray also for the forgiveness of our sin. Thank you for all the blessings and for the life that you have on us. Lord, we pray for Brother Samson, and we pray also for um, Sir Pedro and Glendy for getting better, and Elaine for feeling better, Maria Testad for faster recovery, and for my daughter, Sir uh, Jesus Christ, uh, thank you for the successful result, and Lord, uh, we pray also for all of our brother and sister that suffer in sickness. We pray by the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. This is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Okay, so yes, as we continue our study of the Holy Spirit, yesterday we talked about the Holy Spirit and his part in creation. Did everybody get that? Was the Holy Spirit active in the act of creation? Okay. Yes. Um, what if I told you that after the act of creation, the Holy Spirit disappeared from the Old Testament? Would you believe me? What do you think, Vanessa? Sorry, no, because uh, the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Okay. What do you think, Julie? His Holy Spirit appears on the Old Testament. The, yes, does he? Mm, yes, I guess so. Okay, Cora, what about you? What? Does the Holy Spirit appear in the Old Testament after the act of creation? Uh, I would think um, 
Yes, because the Holy Spirit is part of the three of the three trinities. So it's one God and three trinity. Well, I am glad that everybody got that answer correct. So give yourself a round of applause. Good job, guys. Now, this is actually not only was he there, but he was extremely active in the Old Testament. Um, we're going to probably spend two class sessions dealing with this. So what do you say we jump in it? Before the flood, the spirit of God strove with man. Genesis chapter six, verse three. Now, Lynn, you're up first. Genesis chapter six, verse three. Are we all there? Okay. Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His day shall be 120 years. Okay. So as we see in verse three, the spirit of God struggled with man because man had been rebellious they had hardened their hearts against god and we find that this is the first scriptural references to men hardening their heart uh, we see this throughout mankind's history again and again and again it is here that we first see it However, we also see it in Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Vanessa? Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Are you all there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Therefore, God gave them all up in the last of their hearts to impurity to the disor dishonoring of their bodies among themselves to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves does man still do that miss vanessa yes sir okay ellen verse 26 please romans chapter one Uh, verse 26 says, For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. Okay. Wilma, verse 28, please. Verse 28, And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. God gave them up to a debased mind. So do men still do, do men and women, by the way, do they still do this today? Yes. What do you think, Wilma? Yes, sir. Yes, they do. Go back to Genesis chapter six. And the reason I'm gonna do this, and this is a little bit off topic, but I'm not going to chase it a long ways. I just wanna address it because it's a, uh, it's a commonly misapplied scripture that's here. Genesis chapter six, verse one, Julie. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. When man began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them. Verse 2, please, Mila. And verse 2. The sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives any, any they choose. Okay. Now I have a question for you. What does this say to you when you read Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 and 2? Raleigh? Genesis 
sir. I have no idea. Okay, Fred. Um, when it's, it's speaking, uh, it's two things I remember. One, speaking about uh, the sons of God, meaning, you know, God's people, um, saw that the daughters of men, meaning the daughters from the other nations from around them, saw that they were beautiful and and they and they married many of them they chose okay elaine yes sir <laughs> genesis chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 what does that say to you Um, by, by Mansur. Okay. No problem. Miss Cora? Sweetheart? Yeah. What does it say um, to you? Um, it's It seems like they married anybody that they want. Um, it doesn't matter who the person is. Um, and that probably... I'm not pretty sure, but does it mean that even though it's their brothers, uh, even though they're their sisters or their relatives and they marry them anyway? Okay. Irene? Based from what has already been said, that they intermarried, but in relationship to what we read in Romans, um, and what happened here in Genesis, we can see that um, at least on this verse that, you know, men married women, right? And vice versa, as opposed to Romans where they, you know, gave up the lust of their flesh. Um, and, you know, it's like women marrying women and men marrying men. Okay, very good. Reza? Reza, are you with us? Wednesday. Good, good morning. Good morning. I don't know the topic yet, sir. Hang on, I'll get to it. I promise. Nalin. Have to unmute, Nalin. Gods are marrying the Gentiles. Okay, very good. Uh, Vanessa? Yes, sir. It's just like um, whoever they want, they saw it attractive, something like that, sir. And then they, if they want to marry that, that girl. Okay. Now, I'm going to address something because nobody else seems to be aware of it. There's a mistaken teaching that goes around that in Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 what's being referenced here is that the angels of God came to earth and married men uh, the daughters of men uh, there's several reasons why this cannot be the case and we're going to go ahead and take a look at those uh, before Genesis chapter 6 no angels have been mentioned in the Bible. By the way, hold on a minute. Let me come back over here. Somebody quick, angel. What does that word, what is the Greek word for angel? Angelos. Somebody said it. Who was it? Raise Angelo your hand. Angelos. Angelos. What does it mean? Danger messenger right so they're not always going to be 10 feet tall with great big white wings and a halo yep right mm -hmm. they're messengers um we have no reference yet of these messengers mentioned in the new test in the bible at all in the new testament 
Um, it is human beings led by God who are called sons of God, not angels. Give me First John chapter three, verse one. First John chapter three, verse one. Uh, Wilma, it's your turn, right? Sure, I'm done. Okay, Julie. Mila. First John. John chapter three, verse one, sir. Yes, please. Okay. Are you, are you there? Yes. Okay. Chap First John chapter three, verse one. See what kind of love the father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Okay. So who is referenced here as being children of God? believers in Jesus Christ, right? Rolick, uh, give us Romans chapter 8, verse 14 to go with that, please. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Yes, please. Okay, sir. For many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay, so who is referenced as being the son of God, Raleigh? Led by the Spirit of God. Those men who are led by, and women who are led by the Spirit of God, right? Yes, sir. And we'll take a look at one more, even though I have a litany of verses that can go with this. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 6, Fred. Galatians 4, verse 6. Galatians. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. And it says, yes, please. Because you are sons. God sent the spirit of his son into your hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. Very good. Because you are sons. Who is sons? Believing people who are following God, right? Mm -hmm. So when people want to take Genesis chapter 6 and say that these sons of God are angels, I think they're misapplying things, okay? Okay. Um, there are two classes of angels. The first class of angels for this purpose is the two classes of angels are number one, those who worship and follow God, right? The second class of angels were the, for lack of a better word, bad angels who did what? They followed Satan in his revolt in heaven correct? Yes. Can you see, number one, the angels who are serving God, helping to corrupt mankind? No. Mm -hmm. And can you see angels that are serving Satan being referenced as the sons of God? The answer is still no. Another thing we can look at is that these sons of God took wives that all they chose. And this is an unmistakable reference, as a number of you have pointed out, of the intermarriage of the Jewish people. And that existed. However, another thing to keep in mind is that Jesus Christ flatly told us something important. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 30, please, Elaine. Matthew chapter 22 verse 30. Yes, please. It says here, for in the resurrection, they that 
neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. So based on Matthew chapter 22 and verse 30, do angels marry? No, right? So that gives us several things we can go with. If you ever run across somebody who wants to use Genesis chapter six, verses one and two as evidence that God, the angels came to heaven and created the Elohim, okay? Now there are common to even commentators who've gotten this wrong. Uh, unfortunately, and now I got a sidetrack and now I'll put us back where we're supposed to be because what we notice from Genesis chapter six and verse three is that God strove with men before the flood. Jesus Christ preached to man by the spirit that was in Noah. First Peter chapter three, verse 18. First Peter chapter three, verse 18. Cora, please. First Peter chapter three, verse 18. And go ahead and go to 20. 18 to 20? Yes, please. Okay. First Peter, First Peter chapter 3, verse 18. 18. Uh, for Christ also suffered once for sins, and the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. 19. After being made alive, he went and made proclamations to the imprisoned gift spirits. 20, to those who were disobedient, long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, while the ark was being built, in it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. Okay. So well, there is a popular theology. I'm going to address this. We see in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 20, that Jesus Christ preached with the spirit of Noah, right? Yes. Are most people going to be saved? Mm -mm. No. Prove it. Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. 21. Very good. Let's, let's hear what it says, Julie, since you quoted it for us. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but the one who does the will of God, the will of God will enter the heaven. All right. Not. Good job, Julie. Not everybody gets to go to heaven, right? Yes. Uh, that seems to be a popular theology today that everybody is going to heaven and it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm not going to do it today, but I could 18 through 20 is a lot of meat there that we can deal with. I recommend that you go back and study it a little bit on your own time. We also want to take at uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 to 12. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 to 12. For, uh, actually, just give me First Peter chapter one verse ten, Riza. Ten. Uh, concerning the salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you, search intently and with the greatest care trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted, he predicted the suffering of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. Okay. Uh, Marvin, next verse, please. It, 
It was okay. the year after them, but they were not serving them. So. Look, Reza, hold on a second. Marvin. Okay. Now, First Peter chapter 1, verse 11 says, Inquiring what a person or time, the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. Okay. Nalin, verse 12, please. Verse 12, it was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you, in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Things which angels did what? They long to look. So long. we see that Moses spoke, uh, Jesus Christ spoke with the spirit of Moses, correct? Yes. Second Peter chapter two, uh, second Peter chapter two, verse five. Can you explain that a little bit further? Well, the spirit that was on Moses was the Holy Spirit. The spirit that moved through Moses was the Holy Spirit here on earth. It's the spirit of God. Uh, Jesus Christ also, when he preached, had the spirit, the Holy Spirit. By the way, the apostles also had this, and we'll get back to that as we move along through the study a little bit. But this is the existence of the Holy Spirit after creation, before the entrance of the new covenant. When did the new covenant begin, somebody? After Jesus died. When Jesus died. Very good. Vanessa? Second, Second Peter. Chapter Second, 2, verse 5. Yes, sir. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5 says, as chapter 2, verse 5 says, if he, if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others, when he brought a flood, flood upon the world, of the ungodly okay noah and seven others uh that was noah shem ham japheth and they each had their respective wife um uh, it says a preacher of righteousness and noah was a preacher of righteousness we don't tend to think of him that way but he was um uh, peter demonstrates for us here the spirit of God that was alive and well and active. Uh, the spirit of God also enabled Joseph to interpret dreams. Now, this played an in important part in preserving the family of Jacob from the famine. Why? Well, because Pharaoh recognized that the spirit of God was in Joseph because he could interpret dreams. Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. Ellen, and verse 38, please. Before you go there, can, can I ask you, uh, in Second Peter, I was trying to make the connection. With, okay, go ahead. In reference to, in reference to uh, the spirit. What, what were you saying in reference to the spirit? Um, about well, Noah? the spirit moved through not only the world but it moved through individuals throughout the old testament world mm -hmm. throughout the time of the adamic covenant throughout the time of the mosaic or the levitical covenant they actually sorry adamic patriarchal and then mosaic or levitical covenants God was active in the world, and the Spirit was active also. Uh, he was a preacher of righteousness. He had the Spirit of God that allowed him to do so. And we're going to see the same thing here in Genesis chapter 35. Genesis, so sorry, like saying, Genesis, go ahead. So you're saying like, just like the apostles were inspired, that's what you're Correct. making reference to. 
Noah was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Noah Just was like inspired apostles. by the Holy Spirit also. Gotcha. So Genesis that's chapter why, that's 41. Why, Go ahead. Sorry, Fred. No, that's right. That's why we see prophets were inspired by the Holy Spirit, which Noah would be an example of a prophet. And we also see the apostles were inspired by the Holy Spirit, um, uh, which we see in the New Testament. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Go ahead and read that for us, Fred. <clears throat> Man, that's what this exactly says. So Hebrews chapter 1 says, In the past... Are we, are we there yet? I hear still pages turning. Everybody give me a thumbs up when you're there. I hear still pages turning. All right. Uh, in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. Very good. Does that answer the? That, does that answer your question, Fred? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Genesis chapter forty-one, verse thirty-eight. Vanessa, it's you, right? No, sir. And then, no, sir. I, it's me. Okay. Uh, Genesis chapter thirty. Forty-one. Uh, Forty-one, verse thirty-eight. 38 says, And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find a man like this in whom is the Spirit of God? So where is the Spirit of God? Amen. In Joseph, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And by the way, is this coming from the mouth of a believer? No. No. So when I tell people, if you live like Christ wants you to live, that other people can see the way you living, the way your attitude, the way your outlook is, is entirely different. Guess what? They can. They can see it. Um, we're also going to see this. And uh, the Spirit helped Israel when they were in the wilderness. Uh, the Holy Spirit was with Israel when they came out of Egypt. And he remained in them throughout the time of their wilderness wandering. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 5. Everybody's always going to that book. Right, Wilma? Haggai. Haggai. What chapter, sir? Haggai. Haggai chapter. Two, verse five. Two, verse five. According to the covenant that I made with you, when you came out of Egypt, my spirit remains in your midst. Fear not. My spirit remained where? In your midst. In your midst. That was a promise that existed for the people of Israel, right? God gave them his in spirit to instruct them also. Take a look at Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 20. Julie. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 20. 
said here, You gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manna from their mouth and gave them water for their tears. You gave your spirit to do what? Instruct them. Instruct them. So the Holy Spirit gave instructions, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to also see um, that the workers of the tabernacle, and this is going to be a long, a little bit of a long read, so we're going to read it, and this will be where we stop for today. Um, he enabled the workers to be gifted. Go to Exodus chapter 31 and verse 1, and let's start there. Mila? What chapter again, sir? 31. 31 verse 1. Okay, Exodus chapter 1 verse chapter 1. Chapter 31. Uh, I am sorry. Exodus chapter 31 verse 1. The Lord said to Moses. Verse 2, Robert. Exodus chapter 1 verse 2. See, see, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. I have called by name. Verse 3, please, Fred. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with skills, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts. I have skill, filled him with the Spirit, which gave him skills. Four, Elaine. Verse 4 says here, to devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, and gold. Verse 5, Cora. Verse, verse 5 says, um, to cut and set stones, to work in woods, and to engage in all kinds of crafts. Verse 6, Irene. Verse 6, and I, indeed I, have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Ahishamak of the tribe of Dan, and I and I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans, that they may make all that I have commanded you. Very good. So God gave them skills, right? Verse seven, please, Larissa. Larissa. Thirty-one. The tent of meeting, the ark of the covenant, covenant law with the atonement cover on it, and all the other furnishing of the tent. Very good. Thank you, Risa. Eight, hey, Marvin. Okay, chapter 8, I mean, verse 8 says, And the table and its utensils, and the pure lampstand with all its utensils, and the altar of incense. Uh, 9, Nguyen. Verse 9, And the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the basin and its stand. 10, Vanessa. 10, and the finely worked garments, the honey garments for Aaron, the, pr the price, and the garments of his son for their service as priest. Okay. 11, Ellen. 11 says, and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded you, they shall do. Okay, we're going to run over just a minute. Go to verse chapter 35. Wilma? Exodus chapter 35. And verse 30. Exodus chapter 35, verse 
30. Then Moses said to the people of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah. 31, Julie. 31, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, with intelligence, with knowledge, and with all craftsmanship. 32, Mila. Um, be done in one minute. And verse 32, to devise artistic design to work in gold and silver and bronze. 32, Raleigh. 32, and to devise curious work to work in gold and in silver and in brass. 33, Fred. To cut and set stones to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of artistic craft, craftsmanship. 34, Milan. 34, and he has inspired him to teach him and Okwaneya, the son of Akisama, the tribe of Dan. Okay, 35, Cora. 35 says, he has filled them with skills to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, embroiderers in blue, purple, in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linens and weavers of all kinds of skilled workers and designers. So where did the people get the skills, class? From the Holy Spirit. From the Holy Spirit. Okay, everybody. I love everybody. See you.